We are going to continue on in Unit 4 and discuss solutions. So a solution is a solute plus solvent. Now the solute is given in a smaller amount, while the solvent is usually a larger amount. Sometimes a solution can be referred to as a mixture. And we have um, lots of different encounters with solutions throughout the day. Um, Kool-Aid, think of that as a solution. So the solute would be the powder um, and the water. And you might even have two solutes. Um, in the case of Kool-Aid, if you get the packets without the sugar and then you have to add the many, many cups of sugar, that's another solute. The solvent in the case of Kool-Aid would be the water. Um, so other solutions that you might encounter, saline solutions, um, think about your contacts, if you wear contacts. Um, vinegar is a solution of acetic acid and water. So a lot of different solutions that we encounter throughout our daily lives. Um, now with solution chemistry, you'll find that like dissolves like. So um, similar substances are soluble. And when I say soluble, that means they dissolve in each other. So um, I have a few questions about identifying the solute and solvent in each solution. So um, we have 50 grams of silver and 4 grams of mercury. Just going based on the smaller amount, the solute would be the mercury and the solvent would be the silver. All right, so for 100 milliliters of water and 5 grams of sugar, even though the units aren't exactly the same, um, you can also say 100 grams of water because the density of water is 1. Um, okay, so you see 100 grams of water compared to 5 grams of sugar. Sugar would be, sorry, the solute, and water would be the solvent. So if you look at the last question, I want you to label what you think the solute and solvent are. So one gram of iodine and 50 mils of alcohol. So the iodine would be a solute and the alcohol would be the solvent. So solution chemistry, um, it's important to convey what, how much is in a solution. And so it gets a little bit more complicated than just grams or milliliters because with solutions you have a solute and a solvent. And so that brings us to concentrations. We have different concentrations that can be used to express um, how much is present in a solution. Um, and keep in mind, this is a very important quantity, concentration, how much is present in a solution. So if you have a patient who is needing an IV solution, you can't just say, give them some salt. You've got to say, give them a 5% solution, give them this or that. Um, so the ways that we express concentration um, for solutions, there are several different ways. And, you know, like if you look at vinegar, it says 5%. That's a volume, volume percent. So I'm going to go through these and then we're going to do some practice problems. Um, I will definitely say the hardest thing about solution chemistry is the problems. And practice makes perfect. And so we have some practice quizzes online that cover percent concentration. So I definitely encourage you to use those and practice those. Okay, so the first type of concentration that you can see is mass, mass percent, and it's grams of solute over grams of solution times 100. Sometimes you'll see mass, mass percent abbreviated M, M, parentheses, percent. Okay, so it's grams of solute over grams of solution. Keep in mind the solution is solute plus solvent. 
Okay, the next is volume, volume percent, which is milliliters of solute over milliliters of solution times 100. And that can be abbreviated V over V percent. And then the last one, mass volume percent, which is grams of solute over milliliters of solution times 100. So when you calculate the mass mass percent, the volume volume percent, and the mass volume percent, your units are actually going to cancel out because grams over grams would cancel, milliliters and milliliters would cancel. Grams over milliliters doesn't per se cancel, but a lot of times you're just going to write the units on this percentage as a percent. So let's go to the next page. So um, to calculate the percent concentration, let's look at C, I'm writing, so C number one. Um, below. So 5.25 grams of sugar is dissolved in enough water to make 22.43 grams of solution. What is the mass mass percent concentration of the sugar? You're going to need a calculator handy. Um, but we have the solute given right here and it's nice that the solution has been giving, given. We don't have to add anything. So we're going to take 5.25 grams of sugar divided by 22.43 grams of solution, multiply it by 100, and we should come up with our answer. So, 5.25, whoops, divided by 22.43 times 100, end up with 23, sorry, the glare is better there, 23.4% um, and if you want to, if it drives you crazy not to have units, you can put M over N. So that's how you're going to calculate percent concentration. Um, the next question, how much ethanol is in 125 milliliter glass of beer if the beer is 3.2 percent volume per volume. So we're actually going to be calculating the solute. So this is number two. Okay. So in a glass of beer, beer is the solution, and ethanol is the solute. So a lot of times the tricky part is trying to figure out what the solute is and what the solution is. So we have 125 milliliters of beer and we have a concentration. What you're going to do is use this 3.2% as a conversion factor. So I will say 3.2 milliliters ethanol over 100 milliliters of beer, because that's our solution. So this is the conversion factor that we're going to use, and over here is the starting quantity. So we can just get this problem to work out with unit cancellation, and it does take practice to get these to work out. Um, so I'm going to take 125 milliliters of beer over 1, and I'm going to use this conversion factor, and I want milliliters of beer to cancel out. So I can just use this conversion factor as it's written. Because that gets me the milliliters of my solute. Okay, so milliliters of beer cancels. And what I'm going to do is take... 125 divided by 100 times 3.2. I end up with 4. So 4 milliliters of beer. And since we don't cover significant figures in this class, it's not a big deal 
if you put 4.0 or 4.00 or just 4, I would accept all. Um, so one of the most challenging aspects of these problems is to recognize that anytime you have a percent, you can make it into a conversion factor. Like if I have a class that is 25% male, that means that out of 100 students, I have how many male students? 25. If I have 25 male students out of 100, that means the remaining students would be female, so 75 students. Okay, so let's go on to question three. I want to make a 7% mass per mass sugar solution if I have 34.01 grams of sugar available, how many grams of solution can I make? So this is asking for the amount of solution, so number three. Um, okay, so I have these little shortcuts up here, so when you're doing problems, you can go to that and then refer to the problems. Um, okay, I wanna make 7% sugar solution. This is going to be my conversion factor. I'm going to take it out of 100. So take it out of 100, and since it's mass per mass, it's going to be grams. So 100 grams of solution, I abbreviate solution, S-O-L-N. And then 7 grams will be sugar. This will be my starting quantity. Okay, you can't tell that's a Q right there. Starting quantity. Okay, so I'm going to take 34.01 grams of sugar over 1, and then I'm going to use this conversion factor, but I can't use it as is because the grams of sugar will not cancel out. What I need to do is flip it. So I'm going to have 7.00 grams of sugar, 100 grams of solution. So my grams of sugar cancels out. And so it looks like so 34.01 divided by 7 times 100. And I end up with 486 grams of solution. And the last one, how many milliliters of methyl alcohol, so that's our solute, are needed to prepare 75 milliliters of solution. So this is solution, or 5% volume per volume solution. So again, we're given two quantities. Um, one's going to be the starting quantity, and the other is going to be the conversion factor. So often the concentration it will be the conversion factor. So 5 mils of solute, and you can just put solute in solution if, even if you know. Um, you'll get the, the way you want to work these. 100 mils of solution, and this is my starting quantity. So one of the hardest things to do is to write out my starting quantity in the correct units. So this is 75 milliliters of solution over one. And I want the solution to cancel out, so I'm just going to use this conversion factor as is. Pull it up from here, put it down there. So five milliliters of solute, 100 milliliters of solution. Um, 75 times 5 divided by 100, and I end up with 3.75 milliliters of solute. And again, we don't go into sig figs, but I would go. I would accept 3.75 or um, 3.8 would be correct for the sig fig. So, um, we have one more practice problem on how many grams of solute are needed to prepare the following solutions. Um, 
Again, these will both be starting quantities, SQ. These will both be conversion factors. Sometimes you can see mass per volume written W slash B, and that stands for weight per volume. It's the same thing. So if you want to hit pause here, um, work these out, and then come back, and I will explain these, and hopefully we came up with the same answer. Okay. So um, here we have 100 milliliters of solution. Another key is you're looking for grams of solute. Okay. We'll take 12 grams over 100 milliliters solution. Let's see the glucose. So 100 divided by 100 gives us one. So we end up with 12 grams of glucose. And then the next one, we have 75 milliliters of solution. And you're going to say 2 grams over 100 milliliters of solution. And that's KCL. Um, so 75 times 2 divided by 100, 1.5. So there you go. So there is um, solutions and how to calculate mass mass and volume volume and mass volume percent concentration problems. Um, we have one more concentration that we're going to talk about, which is molarity. Um, and I'll do that in the next lecture. One thing about molarity is it's not percent based. So, um, and I'll repeat that again and again. It is not out of 100. But our percent concentrations are. So mass, mass, volume, volume, mass, volume. These are all multiplied by 100. Study, do your practice problems, email me if you have questions. See you next time.